Yeah. All right. So this is creature and it's pretty old and reaching the end of its life. So I'm going to use AI to give it a reason to stay out of the trash can. What's good enthusiasts? My name is Michael Montague and let's explore the unusual and esoteric side of smart home tech and automations. Now I've had this robot vacuum for over three years and over time we use it less and less and less. Now, why not create an automation so you don't have to think about it? That's what I hear you guys saying. Well, I did. Before Home Assistant, I had Amazon routines that would run at night or if I manually told it to run. And these would work pretty great, but life would change enough where the routine wouldn't really fit our routine. And then I would have to also find time to update the automation. And it didn't help that the robot was also a bit glitchy, which only added to the frustration. My wife asked me one day, or technically on a few occasions, whether or not we should get rid of it. But I personally felt like Creature still had a little bit more time and life to give. So in a final attempt to give it purpose, I'm recreating the old automations I used to have, but I want to take it a step further. I want to use AI to manage the robot, and I mean completely manage the robot. The AI will act as, let's say, a butler in charge of cleaning the floors, and it merely needs to take our family's preference into account when deciding when to clean. Now this way, if our routine changes, I don't have to rebuild the entire automation. I simply need to tell the AI or the butler my new preference instead. When you think of AI, the first and most broadest application of AI is Yes, a chatbot. And because we treat AI largely as a chatbot, the most natural trigger is a question or command that comes from us, the humans, using the tech. Now, you've probably heard of people letting AIs talk to each other, and then they develop their own language of their own, and then the AI overlord takes over the entire world. Like, yeah, all of that jazz. Essentially, I want to open Pandora's box. Some men just want to watch the world burn. And that may be me. So if nothing I said made sense, let me state this very plainly. I want to let AI determine when to trigger automations, manage its own conditions based off of my family's preferences, and independently run the actions that make it all happen. AI is gonna control it from beginning to end. When I created K, one of the things I learned was that the more intense you try to make AI handle, the higher the likelihood it's gonna go rogue. For those of you who don't know, K is my AI powered smart home chatbot that I created a while back. Now, if I am to succeed, Seed, I'm gonna need a new technique that would let AI work with minimal chances of hallucination, but at the same time provide flexibility and autonomy using vague instructions or vague-ish instructions. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, this is a simple problem. Why not just train the model? No, no. Do I look like a coach to you? I ride trains, not conduct them. This is a hobby and not a job. AI needs to work immediately and correctly with no training from me. If you wanna train models, then be my guest, right? Time is short. I'm gonna leave all this training to the Pokemon trainers right over. Point being, I'm not training any models. This stuff just needs to work. Interestingly enough, at my job, I work with some really talented engineers, and one of the buzzwords I hear most often is orchestrator or orchestration. Now this pattern is where you have a central system that manages communication and the flow of data between a bunch of other systems. For example, if you needed to book an Uber ride, a system that uses orchestration would probably have like a central system that would see the requests and then talk to the system that finds the driver. And then that information goes back and then it will talk to the scheduling system and then pair the driver with the client and then it'll go back. And then the orchestrator would talk to payment systems system and then so on and so forth, right? Everything goes through the orchestrator. This means that the orchestrator would have to be large enough and complex enough to understand all of the systems that it needs to interface with in order to keep things moving along. This is how the first version of K previously worked. Every command would flow through the central brain and then route back and forth. But the issue is that the more K is able to do, i.e., right, the more intense I make it handle, the higher the chance of hallucination and things going wrong. Version two, 
I'm going to use a slightly different technique. I'm calling it AI choreography. And in actuality, it's just the choreography pattern that I read in another paper. Using the Uber analogy, uh, this is how it differs from the orchestration. So instead of the central orchestrator handling everything, the independent systems will now call the other systems that are next in line. So for instance, when booking occurs, the initial orchestrator call may call the system that looks for drivers, but then call the system for scheduling, which would then call the payment system. And then that may hand it back to the central orchestrator. But the idea is that the orchestrator handles significantly less. Instead of Kay's brain needing to know every single intent and where to route it, I will create basically many cells of orchestrators that are highly specialized to make independent decisions. Now this will reduce the overall scope and the working and moving pieces into highly specialized cells that can do work very effectively without disrupting and reducing the performance of the entire system. Okay, that was a lot. So I'm going to show you what this means because that, that, that was a lot even for me. So this is Node-RED. It is my primary and preferred way of creating automations because it's flexible, powerful, and dare I say, delightful. Earlier this year, I created a custom plugin called AI Intent, which lets me connect GPT to the automations that I create. With AI Intent, I can create instructions to tell GPT my preference for cleaning the floor and give it all the tools necessary that it needs to work within my house. Let me talk to you about AI tools really quick. So AI tools are kind of like real tools. You like you can have hammers, a screwdriver, a wrench in your toolbox, and they all have a different function in terms of what they can do. You have AI tools, which are essentially the same thing, except instead of like wrenches and hammers, you have functions. And you get to define these functions and what you expect back. GPT has a specific way of defining these functions, and Gemini kind of follows the similar structure. The whole point of these AI tools is to map to your smart home. And the way that they map is usually by some kind of switch or, uh, let's see. Some kind of switch or conditional statement. So when GPT returns back of payload that has this get time function name, then it's gonna, you're gonna have some kind of switch statement in your smart home that says whenever you see that particular name from uh, GPT uh, run a particular uh, automation. That's a shorthand for automation. Or run some kind of function. Depending on what you have in your smart home, you can run an automation or some kind of function. Now I can create the tools it needs and using AI intent, GPT will dynamically link to each of the tools with zero hard coding, which is so glorious. The single piece that makes this entire thing work is the upgrade that I gave AI intent. Version two now has the ability to hold on to conversations. This allows the AI to use its past decisions as context for future actions. If you're not used to this or you're kind of new to this tech, let me walk you through it. Trust me, this is gonna be really cool. When I deploy this automation, Node-RED will tell GPT, you're an assistant responsible for vacuuming the home. You can clean the home at least once per day when everyone is asleep or when the house is empty. You can clean whenever you want as long as you follow the family's preference. You have the following tools to help you. You get the picture. Now, GPT would use its own autonomy to figure out what to do next. Now, tell me, if you were a butler and I gave you those instructions, those beautiful, beautiful, not vague instructions, what would be first? What would you choose to do first? That's right. You would ask for the status of the home so you know what you're dealing with. Then, depending on the state of the home, you would either start cleaning immediately or you would say, remind me in a little while. Now, these instructions would loop perpetually as the AI would govern itself according to my preference. And this is exactly what happens. I want to give you guys a quick demonstration on how this works. I kind of wrestled with how I was going to show this because it's kind of like a very simple thing, but um, I'm just going to show it as is. Currently, my robot is docked. It's just chilling here waiting to do some work. Based on my instructions, there's only two instances in which it needs to clean. One, when no one is home. Two, when everyone is asleep. I have a group sensor that basically determines whether or not someone is home. And I also have this house mode where in it, I can set it to sleep and that will signify that everyone has gone to bed. 
first I'm going to set the house to sleep mode so we can see what happens. All right, let's see what happens when we put it into sleep mode. All right, oh, there we go. Interesting, it's gone into an infinite loop. This is new. All right, let's go figure out what's going on with it. I'm a silly goose. Notice that vacuum status change is causing an infinite loop. I want to know when the home occupancy change and when the house mode changes. Don't really care if the status of the vacuum change because I'm the one controlling that. Let's remove it. Yeah, you saw that? Just just had to delete it. That's all it took to, do, to stop it. Let's redeploy and find out what's going on. All right, everything's back to normal. Let's run this again and see what happens. Bro, we're, like we're debugging this in real time, but I'm, I'm, whatever happens, happens. I'm gonna post this. Y'all get to see what it is, man. Put it to sleep. There we go. And we only got one message this time. Look at him go. Look at him go. Nice. You can see that two messages were sent. The first one is that, you see that input select house mode? That's me changing the mode. And you can see that what came back from GPT is that it said to start the vacuum. And it says the occupants are asleep, so I'll start the vacuum now. And if you notice, that's the same text that you see here. All right, so the vacuum is roaming around the house. I'm gonna stop it by just putting it back to active mode. So this would signify that everyone has woken up. See that? Returning to dock. Nice. The same would essentially occur if I were to toggle, let's say, the occupancy switch. So to let the robot know that everyone has left the house. Yeah, there's no intense logic in this code. It's, we have triggers to let this run. So when the house occupancy change or when the house mode changes, um, and then GPT determines what it wants to do. And then it calls the call intent, which will then do one of a few things, either set the vacuum timer. So it tells itself to wait and, the, or it will either start the vacuum. So up here, or stop the vacuum. And in here we have the commands to start and stop it. And if we wanted to get super fancy, we could have just condensed all of this down into one. But I find that this is a little bit more stable. Um, so I went with this route. And it also makes it easy for me to explain it to everyone. I had this automation running for several days. To get insight into what it's thinking, I had it send me messages to tell me what decisions it was making. And it started the vacuum exactly when we specified it would and sent the vacuum back even in the middle of cleaning if it was outside of our preferences. Like it, it really orchestrated and balanced everything accordingly and I didn't have to tell it anything. It, I just gave it the instructions and it did it. It was really unreal and scary how well it worked, but there were some unexpected results. In my instructions, I was intentionally vague and I told the AI that it must clean once per day. So that means I had to be okay if the AI decided to clean three, four, five, six, seven times in that day. This made me realize that I needed to be a little bit more specific with my commands. My vague instructions also caused a more expensive mistake. I told the AI that if it's not a good time to clean, then check back again in the future. What this meant is that the future could be anything. It would remind itself five minutes from now to 15 minutes from now. If the opportunity came early to clean, then it would take that chance. But technically, it would set a pretty frequent timer for itself to remind itself. This burned through my tokens very fast, especially considering now that each interaction was saved and each call that the AI made held history to the previous one. So every call that's like, hey, are you ready to clean or what's the state of the house? It would see that it's not ready and then it would store it to the history and then it'll make a new call. And then all of that history would just grow longer and longer with each call growing. Yeah, I, I burned through really quickly. But here's the great part about this. Here's, here's the exciting part. I only needed to update my written instructions and nothing else. Telling the AI that it can clean at most two times per day and that it must remind itself in at least one hour increments. I didn't have to change up the flow or anything like that. I just had to tell it, hey, do better. 
and it did listen guys wait this is some futuristic Ooh. right here man and i really would love for you guys to try this out so in the description you're gonna find a link to chaperone there you can find a downloadable copy of this exact automation that i use in this video so you can upload it to node red and try it out for yourself and mind you you're gonna also need version 2 of ai intent so make sure that's installed into node red 2 as well i can hear it i i hear the sounds i hear the sounds Based off of some of my previous videos, I know a lot of you don't use Node Red for various reasons. Like you saw this video, like I made it, you saw it, you watched it, and you see what I'm able to do with Node Red. You see what you can be capable of doing with Node Red. What if you could learn Node Red good enough to where what I did did not seem like witchcraft? This is what I'm going to do. Look, you can learn to create powerful, creative, unique, automations like what you just saw. My goal is to help you home assistant users to create an unique AI powered smart home without complicated code. I can teach you how to create exclusive automations like these that can set you apart and you can add a level of sophistication and unique nuance to your smart home beyond what the smart home cartels can offer you out of the box. You, you might think that this isn't for you or that it's too complicated, but it doesn't have to be. In the course, I show you how to use the application, introduce to you my personal go-to features and provide shortcuts that can get your first automation up and running in mere minutes. Now, there have been many who commented in previous videos uh, that they would like to do these type of automations or how cool and useful it would be. And now you have that opportunity. I want you to walk away from my course so comfortable creating AI automations that you can implement your own ideas and concepts for yourself. Now, YouTube has a way of elevating the vocal minority, so I don't know if this is valuable to folks, and it would do everyone a disservice, including my family and myself, if I were to waste time creating something that very few wanted. So I'm pre-selling this course. There have been quite a number of you who already jumped onto the opportunity based off of just the little I said from my previous video, and even more of you found it before I even mentioned anything. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> but to ensure quality, I am only pre-selling to about 500 people, and that's it. My bandwidth is really limited, and I... I want to make sure that I provide the highest possible value. Now, for those of you that jumped at this early, like you got a discount and I want to sincerely thank you for that and for being an early supporter and seeing the value in this course. And I know the YouTube algorithm is a bit strange, so probably a lot of you haven't seen it, especially from my previous video. So I'm going to be extending this discount to the next 100 people who sign up using the discount code in the description. If you see this video late or didn't make it in time to be one of the first 500 people, then you can sign up for the newsletter, which is also in the description. They were among the first to actually learn about the course and joining the newsletter. You can be one of the first to learn about it too. Now, here's something to consider. AI is here to stay and companies will use AI and sell you the bare minimum. I've seen them th <clears throat> thoughtfully add AI into their websites, apps, and products and expect us to think that they're modern or providing value or they have some unique selling point. Case in point, I was recently on a website and I'm not going to say which one, and they had a new feature, a new AI feature in the UI that would rewrite my post to increase engagement. But when I clicked on the feature, I was met with a paywall. Now, the punchline to this joke is that GPT exists and it's free. It's very powerful. And it was literally on the screen next to this website. So I don't know why this is like, what were you, what were they trying to do? And I don't know how many people would purchase or buy a subscription of their of whatever they were selling just to have that feature I, I, I don't understand like is their ai feature so much better than open ai's or or does it provide so much value that it has to be paid feature i i bring all of that up because when you're capable of using ai and can match or even outclass what companies can do who are doing the bare minimum you raise the bar for consumers and companies must raise their bar in order to meet yours. You force them to innovate and actually give something that's worth a damn. Let's elevate our smart home and show them how to make it actually worth a damn. All right, I'm going to put this thing back. I, I don't want the butler to get mad at me.